He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host, and I thank you for watching our broadcast today. There's a scripture, uh, John chapter 10, verse 10. It says, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. And basically what the thief is, it's the devil. And he comes to uh, lie about how to get your sins forgiven and how to get to heaven. And he's the master of it. He's the father of lies and the truth is not in him. And he doesn't want anybody to spend forever with him. He wants everybody, excuse me, to spend eternity with him in the lake of fire burning because their sins aren't forgiven because they think they know how to get to heaven. But after that, Jesus says, I've come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. And that's what happens when an individual repents of their sins and comes to Christ and the Holy Spirit comes into their heart and they change their life. Uh, like my guest, Jesse Jerrigan today. And there's another scripture uh, that comes to my mind, and it's Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. They overcame him, which is the devil, by the blood of the lamb, which is Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. He gave us a free gift that he who knew no sin became sin, so we could be the righteousness of God. And the word of our testimony. So when an individual comes to Christ, they have a testimony, and that's within their heart. See, man can change the outer appearance. They can change it on the outside, but only the Lord could take a heart and change the inside out and bring the truth and you have a testimony. So today we're gonna uh, speak with Jesse Jerrigan and Jesse has a testimony because she no longer believes the lie of the enemy uh, and she has known the truth through Jesus Christ. So. Jesse, thank you for coming on our broadcast today. Um, every, every family that's born is dysfunctional. Uh, people might not think it because that, that looks like the perfect family. The children have everything in order. They're intelligent. They're peaceful. They're, 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 they're just the, the perfect family. Well, there was only one perfect family, and that was Adam and Eve. And before they disobeyed God, they were perfect and they were not dysfunctional. So um, in your growing up, Jesse, in your dysfunctional family, uh, was it really, really dysfunctional? Was it a little dysfunctional? Uh, how, how was it when you were uh, brought into this uh, world? Um, it, was, it was really dysfunctional. In fact, even um, when I was born, my mother, uh, I was choking. And so um, in the womb, and they had to do emergency C-section um, with no anesthetic. And so that was my entrance. So that's pretty dysfunctional in itself. And then also, um, my mother and father didn't get along and, um, they got a divorce and the splitting of the family, um, uh, and a broken home, um, and alcohol, um, and drug use with my parents. And, um, as a, as a young, uh, as a youngster just coming up, that must've been devastating to you jesse it was the most devastating thing was the divorce uh the splitting of the family uh that it, that devastated me um extremely uh two separate states we we lived from our mom and dad yeah and when uh, that happened um what was the situation within your heart did you get angry at that time, or did you get anger? Uh, and uh, if you did, uh, how did that manifest itself uh, in your life? Um, I don't, I, I remember pain more than anger initially um, and devastation because um, I no longer had my father in, in the home. Um, and gradually um, it changed from pain and devastation to anger and rebellion when I was about 12 years old. And where did that, Jesse, uh, lead uh, your rebellion to? My rebellion led to 
um, extreme drug use and criminal activity. Um, I was a juvenile delinquent. I was arrested um, by the age of 13 years old. Um, so, yeah. And, and uh, when you were arrested at 13 uh, years old, uh, and when this happened to you, uh, did you ever think uh, in your life at, from 13 to now that you'd be where you are now uh, because of the situation that happened? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I am, I am so blessed. So let's tell, um, uh, they say uh, the apple doesn't fall far away from the tree. Um, and you had drug and alcohol use in your family. Uh, and so you said it started. Uh, what what uh, escalation did that bring you to? Um, well, both of my parents were functioning uh, addicts, alcoholics, meaning that they could um, keep jobs and run a household, um, make not, not the best atmosphere, but um, pay the bills and go to work and pick us up and, you know, feed us and stuff. So, um, but I, uh, with two functioning parents that were addicts, I became a very dysfunctional addict. And with the rebellion and um, anger, um, first started off with just smoking cigarettes and, you know, running away um, to family violence and um, disrespect to my mother. And, you know, um, gradually went into like hallucinogens and um, like acid and ecstasy and uh, cocaine and heroin and, you know, um, then IV drug use. So basically, um, you're a miracle. Yeah, I'm a definitely a miracle. Yes, hallelujah. So uh, were you, did you quit school? Because uh, you said you were this, a dysfunctional person doing this uh, or did you maintain school and just went high or did you go to school or what was that about? Um, it was actually a miracle. I did actually graduate high school. Um, it, but when I was 15 years old, I went to reform school in Montana. Um, a behavior modification rehabilitation program for troubled teens. Um, Spring Creek Lodge is what the name of it was. And so that in itself was um, also dysfunctional and devastating to move from my family to this reform school. I had sweet 16 in there. I missed out on all my proms. Um, when I did go to regular high school, I, I don't remember any of my teacher's names. I don't, I, I remember maybe two of them out of all of the teachers I had. I hardly ever showed up to class. I ended up in the PLUS program, which is for like, um, you know, kids who are behind in school. And so I cheated my way through um, that and I hardly ever showed up. So it's even a miracle that I, I have a high school diploma. <laughs> and so um, you, you sound like, um uh an individual that was totally totally uh ripe for suicide um did did that jesse ever come into your heart and mind and if it did did you ever try it no i never was suicidal um i but you know i would say uh, i've thought about um you know mutil self mutilation when you do drugs like that and you're using needles and stuff I mean, that's like mo like mutilation to yourself, really. Um, but I was never suicidal. I was just more angry, rebellious. I was going to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it with who I wanted to do it with. Um, there was no stopping me. I was disrespectful. I was um, I was in ISS. I got arrested at school for having cigarettes on um, school property for you know, uh, running away, um, you know, so there was no suicide, um, believe it or not, that's, that's a blessing. That's the interesting thing, Jesse, is, mm -hmm. is that there was no suicide, because uh, the bottom, the bottom line is, is that uh, you were ripe for it, uh, mm -hmm. with um, all that um, drugs that you did, and then heroin, and so uh, birds like a feather flock together, 
Um, did you ever have anybody in your midst that came to you and talked to you about Jesus uh, in your uh, wildest hours that you were living in? Um, I had my, my father praying for me because uh, he repented um, when I was 18 years old and I, I was a waitress at a strip club. It was my first job that I ever had. And um, he came down from Colorado and tried to pull me out of that lifestyle because um, he repented and gave his life to Jesus completely. And he prayed for me and he tried to came, come and rescue me. Um, and I don't really remember any other ones that, that did. Be, I, I really have a hard time remembering most of my life, honestly, because I was so intoxicated every all every day that it's kind of a blur from age 12 to 28 and and, <laughs> and uh the, the um i feel bad for people uh who are atheists uh especially in the world that we live in today uh when somebody hears your testimony um if they are an atheist uh it would blow them away that there's no god because uh Self-help groups uh, couldn't do what, what Jesus did. So um, now, did you get involved with uh, anybody that was uh, just like you on a basis where it was like a Bonnie and Clyde type of a thing? Because uh, <laughs> they, they, they used to get, uh, uh, they were just pretty uh, <laughs> like uh, the law knew who they were. Uh, did that ever happen with you? Yes, it, it sure did. Um, my, my current husband, <laughs> now we've been married 13 years. We were known, the, the jails called us Bonnie and Clyde. We got arrested together so much um, that we were called Bonnie and Clyde because we did crime together, arrested together, jail together. So, yes, sir. <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, uh, in, in the prison where you were, uh, and prisons, because there's probably different prisons that you were in. Mm -hmm. um, yes, sir. Did, did you have, and, and also, Jesse, they probably had Bible studies. Or Did you ever think about going there uh, to a Bible study? That's the beautiful thing. Every single time, uh, well, not every single time, but majority of the times when I was incarcerated um, was the only times I was sober. And so... I did want God at those times, and I did know that he was the only answer, and there were Bible studies, there were, um, you know, volunteers that would come, and I would go to um, all the meetings, and God worked on me little by little each time I went. So basically, Jesse, you had um, a, a, a foundation, uh, e even though uh, your, your spirit man was reckless. And, and once you left that environment, uh, you got involved in it again and again and back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, and of course, your father was praying for you uh, and uh, the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And, and so um, what was the catalyst, uh, Jesse, that, that happened in your life that, that caused you to just really cry out unto the Lord and to just ter totally you know, surrender your will uh, to God. Uh, and what was the, what was, because you, you say you have a hard time to remember a lot in your life, but something like this, there's certain things that I remember specifically mm -hmm. going back many years. I remember when JFK was shot and, and when they announced it. And I remember exactly when they said he died. I remember exactly when 9-11 happened, where I was, and I remember blackouts that we had when I was a young boy, and I, I remember exactly where I was. Uh, you remember exactly the situation that happened to you? There's a, there's a couple. The, the main ones that stick out are the first one and the last one um, that happened where I encountered God. Um, the first one where I encountered God, my husband and I um, were having a really difficult time um, because we were so high on drugs. We were awake for so many days that uh, the spiritual realm was very obvious to us. And it was frightening because uh, we realized that there is a demonic realm. Um, at, and so in that, I was in fear um, I made it to a church uh, with my dad's help, uh, my husband and I and my oldest son. And I cried out on the altar from the depths of my soul to God. 
and he came down and he rescued me and I fell down to the ground. I was delivered. He loved me. He baptized me in his spirit. I sang beautifully um, in, in, in an unknown language that, that was just beautiful. Um, and I felt the love and that's when it all started. Um, it all started then. And, and I'll never forget that. It was the most beautiful thing because um, I cried out with sincerity and God heard me and he rescued me in my darkest hour. And uh, what I said earlier is um, we can change on the outside, but just tell about how when the Holy Spirit, who is God, came in, what on the inside God did to you? Because when he comes in like that, th that rebellion and that anger and that uh, th stuff that Satan had put in you because of your situations from a little girl, that has to just move to the side, doesn't it, Jesse? Oh, yes. My heart was a heart of stone. And like the Bible said, he says he'll give you a heart of flesh for a heart of stone. And that's exactly what he did. In all of the pain, I have never felt such a, a beautiful, genuine love. It, it was the most real and, and comforting and, and beautiful thing. It was like I was being hugged by the sunshine inside me and that all the pain uh, was just melting away. And, um, and, and I've never felt anything better than that in my life. I always say there's no high like the most high God in heaven. And so you knew that you were in the right place uh, at the right time. And you met the living God. But, you know, as I said, mm -hmm. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. and, and he doesn't give up. And um, you, you're a drug addict for many years, from like 12 to 28 and so mm -hmm. forth and so on like that. Um, did he come back to get you and to try to get you back into his, his um, camp? And if he did, uh, you know, was he successful for a short time? Oh, yes, he most certainly did. If you can only imagine, um, at the age of 12 years old, you're still not even fully developed. And so there were a lot of things that I, I didn't know that I never learned because I chose drugs and that that rebellious life. I never held a real job. I worked at strip clubs and and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, he most certainly came after me. Um, and, and I fell back um, quite often because I didn't know any other way to live. I, I didn't know any other way. But God was always there waiting for me to come back into his arms. And he was building me up and teaching me. Um, and yes, so yes, sir, he most certainly did come back and get me. Mm -hmm. And you said the, the other um, instance that you remembered is about how it came to pass uh, in your heart that the Lord rescued you from uh, the wiles of the enemy because he's very powerful, he's very cunning, uh, he's an angel of light. So what was the second uh, time, uh, Jesse, that, that it, the Lord came and it's been sealed now? There's no more going back. One day at a time. Yes, that's right. Um, it was November 15th, uh, or yeah, November 15th, 2015. I got arrested for aggravated robbery and possession of methamphetamine, more than three and a half grams, and um, possession of a controlled substance in a correctional facility. And so, um, and I was one month pregnant with um, a, a little girl. And um, I ended up being incarcerated and having to go to prison. And I did my whole pregnancy um, in county jail. And I had, I had my daughter in, um, in a prison hospital. And this is when it all, I came to the end of myself completely. And um, I, was com I was pretty much left alone um, to do this by myself. My husband was not around. And um, you know, was doing drugs. Um, I, I was in prison before him. And so I had to do a lot of forgiving. And um, I had to realize that I was a grown woman, that I was 28 years old. 
um, that nobody was going to feel sorry for me, that everybody was tired of me messing up and going in and out. My mother and father, my father was still praying, but my mother had pretty much really given up. And, um, and so it was just me and Jesus and, um, in Holy Spirit and the Bible. And I went through my training grounds in prison um, with the Holy Spirit, fasting, praying, um, self-deliverance, and all the beautiful things that he showed me in his beautiful word that completely set me free. So where, where are you now today? You, you have uh, in a couple of weeks uh, another year coming up, which would make it seven years. Uh, where, mm -hmm. are, where are you today? Um, uh, your life is uh, like uh, day and night. Uh, totally changed around. And you said you and your husband were having a very difficult time. Uh, God is a God of restoration. Now, he, he restored you to your father. Uh, what mm -hmm. about, was there a restoration with your mom uh, and, and your husband? Oh, yes, there was. Uh, when I was in prison, um, my dad, you know, he restored that with my father. And then my mother, I prayed that God would let me out of prison and that he would restore the relationship with my mother. Everything I had put her through with worrying and jail and shackles and chains and, you know, running away and family violence. And so God did. He restored the relationship because I chose him, he restored me, and then he answered my prayers, and he gave me the desires of my heart, which was restoration with my dad, restoration with my mom. I was able to get out before she passed away. I had two years with her. We were best friends. She went from listening to ZZ Top and Led Zeppelin to K-Love and Air One, um, and she repented, and she quit drinking about six months before she died. And so God answered that prayer. Then he restored the relationship with my husband. I chose to forgive him and I, and I forgave him and I supported him and I was there for him. And he did um, five years in jail and I was there for him the whole time. Then God restored my children to me, my oldest son, Kobe, my youngest son, Taylor. And a year after that, my husband came home and he's been out of prison for a year now. Complete restoration. And when your husband was in prison, um, could he have been a lot longer uh, in prison, uh, Jesse? Uh, uh, they say, by, uh, but by the grace of God, there goes I. Uh, did God manifest himself uh, through, the, through the judge or whatever to get a shorter sentence than what he could have got? He absolutely did. My husband was looking at 25 to life. He has 12 felonies. Um, and he had been down three times already, and um, and we were in Texas. It's really tough uh, in Texas. They're they're very strict, and so he was going to get 25 to life. It's an absolute miracle that he only got 12 years, only through prayer. And not only was that a miracle, but him getting out on parole when he did was also a miracle. Um, so hallelujah, yes, thank you, Jesus. The miracle working God. Uh, yeah. when, when, when you were out there uh, with uh, Bonnie and Clyde, uh, did, did you have any other people that were involved with you or what, what, that was doing, you know, the things that you were doing? And if you did, after you really you came to Christ and totally gave your heart to the Lord, did you start to share the good news with those people that you might have been running with? Oh, yes, we, sh we have a Facebook page and we share um, everything that's going on in our lives and what God has done to people that everybody that we've ever known. And we've got such wonderful responses of, of from people. And they're so happy that, you know, if we can do it, that anybody can do it. Um, they, there was this saying in our town where I'm from that um, there was a list of people who would never make it, who were just crossed off that they'll never make it they're never they're never going to change and I was one of them and my husband was one of them and my friend Patrick was one of them and a lot of them on the list have passed away from drug overdoses um, and some of them are still not making it but there's three of us that were on the list from the town that have made it through the grace of God it's a miracle that we're all three even alive 
I see on your shirt, it, it says set free. Yes. And, uh, uh, um, I am set free. And you have a scripture there. There's so many people that are in prison. And, and my good friend, David Berkowitz, who was the son of Sam, who, you know, killed six people in 1976. He's been a believer for 35 years and he's in prison and he's free. I mean, he's free. He has no shackles. He's free. But there's so many people that are out in the world, billions of people uh, who are out there, 7 billion people in the world. Just say 1 billion people have a relationship with Jesus. The six mm -hmm. billion people who are shackled, uh, not with what you could see shackles, but within. They're shackled, they're bound up, they're not free. Uh, they're not free, they're addicted, and they're like what you were. And so mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to just say uh, for about a minute, something on your heart to the audience, Jesse. If God can do it for me, a wretch like me, I was blind, I was lost, but now I can see. He is no respecter of persons. What he's done for me and other people, he can do for you. He can break every chain, every bondage, every heart, every heartache, all trauma. He can take it from you if you make the choice to give, give him your life. And uh, it's the best decision that I ever made. And if it wasn't for God and the blood of Jesus Christ, I could be in hell right now. And I often thought I never wanted to die in my sins. And I don't want you to die in your sins either. I don't want anyone to die in their sins. And neither does God. And Jesus died for us. So I just, I would just ask that, that you give him a shot. Give him a chance. Pray. Get down on your knees. Come to the end of yourself. I've tried everything. Rehabs, jails, programs, NAAA. Um, reform schools, nothing worked for me, but Jesus, he set me completely free, and I live an abundant life of restoration and healing. And that's the bottom line. Uh, Jesus said, I've come to give you life and, and give it to you uh, more abundantly, and uh, the devil had come uh, for quite a few years uh, in your life to steal, kill, and destroy, but mm -hmm. But God, and, and with the restoration, uh, you're free. And 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 the thing that is, uh, besides, well, the number one thing is that you know you're not a fear of death, that you know you're going to be forever with the Lord. But He has a plan, a purpose for your life, and to give you hope in the future. And the joy of the Lord, now you, Jesse. Thank you for uh, coming on our broadcast today and, and sharing uh, your experience, uh, how. Uh, the apple did not fall far away from the tree with your father now because he got saved and you're saved. And what a blessing. So, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, uh, this is what it's all about. This is not what it's all about here. It's about our eternal destination. Our body's going to go. It might be cremated, might be in the ground. But where's our soul going to go? The Bible says the soul that sinneth will die. And Jesus doesn't want your soul to be destroyed. And with, like uh, Jesse was saying, hell and then the lake of fire. He wants mm -hmm. to restore you and give you life more abundantly. So ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for coming uh, here uh, to watch our show. And uh, we thank you that you will, by faith, we believe that you're going to make the best decision you ever made in your life, like Jesse said. Thank you for watching us again. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain.